Hello, everybody. Welcome back to C++ Programming. I'm Rudy Vanell, and, uh, well, in the last video, we just finally created our first Hello World program. Now we're going to move into uh, a new concept, or at least kind of review some of the things that we have learned with data types and variables. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new script over here. I'll close out of the other one here. Uh, I'll save this as 02 data types dot cpp you should do the same thing and uh, you can see now that exists in my folder in cwork okay uh, I'm sure you guys remember the way that we start off our, our, our program is to include IO stream so we can actually use input and output and this time I am going to type in using namespace std for using the standard namespace that way we don't have to repeatedly have std colon colon in front of uh, our C out whenever we output things now let's go ahead with our main function. Remember that always has the int type because we're always returning an exit code that may be uh, maybe zero if it's successful or maybe anything else if we want to tell the system any other distress signal, that sort of thing. So we've got our main function and uh, let's use our curly braces and curly brackets for uh, actually denoting the code block here. Okay, now let's get into variables and data types. You know up at the top there, we actually have int, and that stands for integer. And we can say any variable or anything that can actually hold information or data, if you guys aren't, a, aren't f familiar with the term variable, it can vary, it can refer to anything else. There are a lot of good explanations for what a variable is online, but it's pretty similar to kind of algebra, if you think back to middle school or high school algebra. So let's have an int i. And that can equal, we can declare, define that variable, int i can equal 4. How about that? Now, C++ also allows you to um, kind of declare a variable before you define it. We can say, okay, int i simply exists. We haven't set a variable for it yet, but we know that we're going to be using int i later on. We can just say int i and then have our semicolon to denote the end of the line. And then we can, of course, supply int i is equal to 4. But if we do this, actually, let's just set up c out i and I'll new line. And I'll bring over my terminal so you can see how this will work. c plus plus o2, g plus plus, g plus plus o2. If we say int i, it'll note that, okay, that was previously declared in this line, int i over here. If we declare it, we cannot define it by using the keyword int one more time. So let's say int i, that, okay, i is going to exist, and then we can define i can equal 4. Now if we try to compile this, it'll work just fine, and we can run a dot out. It's printing 4 because we know that that's the value of i. We can do this all in one step. We can say int i is equal to 4, like we had at the very beginning. Now if we try this, that works just fine. It compiles for us, and we still get a dot out, i is going to equal 4. Awesome. So there's a simple integer. Of course, that can be 0. Of course, that can be any negative numbers. That's just an integer. Great. Remember, uh, actually, let's move on before I introduce that. Let's get into Boolean values. Booleans are things that can be true or false. They're like Boolean logic. One is either yes or no. Is the sky blue? That should return true. Uh, let's say blue, or sorry, b bool b. <laughs> bool b. Uh, that can equal false. And rather than in Python, we don't use a capital F or a capital, tr or capital T for true. It's going to be lowercase true or lowercase false. Now if we print out b, compile this, run it, 0, which is false. If we set it to true, compile this, 1, because 1 is true and 0 is false. That's the way that Boolean logic really, really works. Okay, cool. Now, remember, before I get too far ahead of myself, remember that variables can only start with a letter or an underscore. They cannot start with numbers. If I were to say 2b, what if I tried this? What if I tried to compile this? Nope. Well, of course, I, I used 2b over here. Now let's try to compile this. Expected unqualified ID before no merit constant. That just can't happen. We just can't have a number start the variable. 
It can, however, be an underscore bool underscore br variable. Now if I run this, that compiles just fine, and it's still 1. Okay, that works just fine for us. Let's move on to another data type. Let's move on to the char, or the character. And though it can hold a single letter, we can have C, and that can equal A. Now if we print out what's the value of C, compile this, run it, we get A, because we've set that to equal that variable. Awesome. Just so you know, that is the syntax. It should be char. And we can have floats. Float can represent uh, any decimal with numbers that are often have characters after the period. Float f can equal 0. Point blah 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 blah. Now if we print out f, compile this, and run it. Cool. Very nice for us. There's another one, um, double. Double is pretty similar to uh, float. Let's use any number here. Double D. 3.34321. Okay, that works just fine for us as well. And there's also another one, uh, unsigned integers. Unsigned integers, unsigned int, it's unsigned space int. Unsigned integers are only positive numbers. They cannot be negative. So if I said s to equal negative 4, maybe there will be an error here. Hopefully hopefully my compiler will tell me something. Oh. No? Yeah, it's going to freak out, for one thing. <laughs> but if we set it to be regular 4, that works just fine for us. I guess it will compile, but it will not use the value that we actually want. We can have it be signed, and that sign means that it can be negative. If we compile this, now we get negative 4. Can we have a positive one, though? Let's find out. We can. We can have 4. Sign means it could be either positive or negative. Okay, so those are lots of different variable types that you'll typically see in, uh, in C and C++. Lots of variable types. Simple, kind of basic. Integers, I, booleans, characters, floating point numbers, and signed ones. You don't see these too often. Typically you'll be using with characters, booleans, or integers. That's the way things typically work. You also have short and, and long, and these are extended or smaller versions of integers. You can look on that. You can research that and look it up online if you'd like. There should be plenty of documentation for C++. But, uh, we forgot our return zero line. Oh man. Keep in mind, though, that you can declare the variables. Bool b. But then we can't. We cannot use the keyword afterwards after we've def after we've declared it, but not defined it. So mentally, kind of divide those ideas in your mind: defining a variable and declaring a variable, declaring a variable and defining a variable. Those are uh, different things. So, okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this is just a simple rework for, um, well, data types and the way you can manipulate your data and your information in your program. It has to be kept track of with a specific type, and you have to set that uh, statically, int or bool or character or that sort of thing. Thank you guys for watching. Simple syntax, simple stuff in C++. Hope you're enjoying this, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.